let's get this one out of the way because this is the only leather in this video that I truly dislike with a passion. Hey guys, my name is JPS and welcome back to my channel. First and foremost, Happy New Year. I hope you guys are as excited for 2021 as I am. And I spent the past couple of days thinking about what video would be the perfect one to kick off the new year with. And I've landed on a topic that has to be, I think one of the, if not the most requested video by you guys, which is a guide to Hermes's leathers. And quite frankly, I've been meaning to do this video for a really long time. And the reason why I haven't done this sooner is because it's just such a large topic. Hermes has just an impressive range of different leathers. So I needed some time to figure out the best way to approach this. And I decided that we're going to start off by breaking down six different leathers, three of my least and three of my most favorites, which I think would make this a little bit more manageable. But if there are any other leathers that you'd be interested in, then please be sure to mention them in the comment section. And I'll do my best to address them in an upcoming video, maybe in a part two. But without further ado, let's get into talking about what Hermes leathers you should absolutely avoid and which ones you should request if you are new to the world of Hermes. Okay, let's get this one out of the way because this is the only leather in this video that I truly dislike with a passion. Even though I know this is going to be a controversial opinion because some people absolutely love this leather, some people hate it, and I happen to lean towards people who dislike it. And it is the so-called box calf, which is one of Hermes's most iconic heritage leathers. It is one that has been around since the 1920s, I believe. And if you would just mention the name Hermes to most people, they would immediately think of the iconic Kelly bag that Grace Kelly was carrying, which was in box leather. So I understand why it's such a huge part of Hermes's legacy, but it's another leather that I can get on board with. But in case you're not familiar with the look of box leather, it is an extremely smooth calfskin that has been polished to the max. I mean, no leather gets even more glossy and polished than box leather, which is actually the downfall of this, of this particular skin because of this really high shine polished finish, which I would almost compare to a mirror. If you pick up a brand new Kelly, for example, in box leather, you will almost see your reflection in the skin. It's so extremely polished. Because of this finish, it is extremely prone to scratches and marks. You can basically just run your finger over the surface of the leather and you'll likely see this mark being left behind from the natural oils and sweat on your skin, which if that happens with your finger, you can only imagine what happens once you actually start using and carrying this bag. It's just an absolute disaster in my opinion. Some people call these changes patina, which um, if you speak to people working at RMS, some of them will absolutely admire this. When I buy something, I don't want it to change color and shape and texture. If you think of patina and you don't know what it is, I would almost compare it to the experience of you taking an apple, cutting it into half, eating one of the halves, and then the other one you just leave on the counter for a couple of hours. And you know how an apple it starts oxidizing within a couple of hours, it changes colors, it starts shrinking. It's just not an appetizing look. That's pretty much what happens to box leather. It essentially changes color, texture, finish, and eventually shape because box leather is quite a robust leather, which makes it great for more structured bags. So a Kelly Cellier, even a Constance, a Verbum mini chain, but because of that robust heaviness and full bodiness of the leather, it eventually starts falling in on itself because of just purely because of the weight of the bag. It doesn't matter how well it's constructed. That's what happens to the leather because it's just so incredibly full bodied. Not to mention that this leather is going to be more expensive than pretty much any other regular leather by Hermes. It's definitely up there in price. And it's only available in a handful of colors. It's an old school leather that is only available in selected colors. So you'll most often see it in black, 
usually with gold hardware, which is a, the true classic in a Kelly 28 or a Kelly 32. You'll be able to find it in usually some shade of red. Sometimes it's Rouge Ash, sometimes it's Rouge Kazakh or some other shade of deep red. It comes in blue marine sometimes, a shade of orange. So there are a handful of colors that you can find it in, but definitely not a huge selection. So I'm personally, as you can tell, not a big advocate of this leather. One pro I have to add, however, is the fact that because this leather is so full bodied, it is one that can be repaired by RMS Craftsman. So if you happen to find a vintage box Kelly or a box Birkin on the pre-loved market and you want to have it repaired, there is actually a lot that an RMS Craftsman is able to do with it because the leather is just so robust that they have wiggle room in terms of how much refurbishment they can do to it but there are only so many times you can have a leather repaired and obviously it's going to cost you every single time you're going to be without your back for at least three to six months depending on where you drop it off and how busy the Hermes workshops are so even though it is something that's possible I wouldn't recommend that you that you rely on that solely unless you absolutely love that lived in look it's definitely not for you. Next up, a leather that I definitely don't have as strong of feelings for as I do for box is Swift. Swift is a leather that is in similar to box in some ways and completely different in others. It is a smooth leather, but it does have some really, really shallow, barely noticeable grains. On some pieces, it's more noticeable than others which I think really comes down to the color that you pick it up in. If you buy it in a color that's deeper or more of a saturated vivid color, it will be easier for you to see the pronounced grains. But if you pick it up in a lighter color, like let's say a Rose Sakura or Blanc, which is pure white, those colors will almost hide the grains of the leather. But at the end of the day, from the far, it will look completely smooth, which I find is not something that I appreciate when it comes to RMS leathers, because I find that the more smooth the leather, the more prone to scratches it's going to be. And that's absolutely something that I would like to avoid. Although Swift is quite different from Box, I would say that it's a tiny bit less likely to marking and scratching because simply it's not as smooth as box and it has a very different feel to it box as i mentioned is really structured and robust swift on the other hand is really soft and supple it almost feels buttery soft when you first get it and it will actually become softer over time which is the reason why i don't think it's worth investing in an expensive swift bag especially one that needs some hold and some structure to it so for example a kelly even if it's a return Kelly, I still wouldn't buy it in Swift because it's a leather that as it ages, first of all, it develops a little bit more sheen and it starts becoming more soft and supple, which means that if you buy it in a bag that does need to keep a certain structure, Swift is not going to do a great job. It almost, it almost looks like a balloon that has started deflating as the bag ages which is the reason why I wouldn't suggest that you invest in a bag made of this leather. When it comes to smaller bags like a Gigi or a small leather good, you absolutely can. But when it comes to Birkins and Kelly's, it's definitely not my preferred leather. I understand that certain colors are only available in this leather because it is a leather that can portray colors beautifully. It's still not one that I would personally recommend that you go for. If you absolutely need to, I would recommend that you go for a bag as small as possible so it has the least amount of weight to it. And you want to make sure that you use an insert in every single one of your Swift bags that have a little bit more shape and structure to them. And the last leather that we'll talk about in my sort of least favorite category is Evercolor. Not to be confused with Evergreen, although I don't like either one. But Evergreen came first, then came Evercolor. And you would think based on the name that Evergreen has more pronounced grains and Evercolor comes in more colors, but that's actually not the case. Anyway, long story short, I don't like either one. So I could be talking about either one of these leathers, but I chose to, to mention Evercolor. They are not the same, but they are from the same sort of family of Hermes leathers. It's similar to Swift in the sense that it's really soft and really supple. I would actually argue that it's probably softer than Swift. But it does have more of a sheen to it, which only gets enhanced as it ages. 
and it has these tiny little artificial grains printed onto the surface which are definitely more noticeable than they are on Swift leather. So it's kind of like an artificial mix of Swift and Togo, which is the reason why I don't like it. I would prefer if this leather was either completely smooth or if it was grained. And I find that these two features and characteristics really clash in this leather, which is why I cannot get on board with it. You will most often see this leather being used on bags that need some some flexibility to them. So Rooley is one that you often see this in because of the flap, they don't want the leather to crack. So they often use this in Rooleys. You'll often see this leather being used on Birkins that they want to give a more supple effect to. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not one that I would get on board with. However, if you're looking for sort of a more smooth leather, one that's on the more smooth spectrum of Hermes leathers, this would probably have to be the best out of Box and Swift and all the other smooth leathers because all of those printed grains will give you a little bit of a shield from all the scratches and marks. Okay, let's move on to some of my absolute favorite leathers when it comes to Hermes. And the first one is one that I actually don't own in my collection, although I would love to, which is the so-called Wood of Lee, aka Suede. It's, Hermes just calls it Dobly or Verdobly in their own terms, but it means suede, which is the most beautiful, matte, buttery soft velvety leather that almost feels like a teddy bear if you really look at it. And it has that beautiful sort of suede fuzziness to it. It's definitely not a smooth suede. It's one that is just really kind of raw when you first look at it. And it is just a really appealing look. However, it's definitely not for you if you're looking for a bag to use on a regular basis and if you want the bag that ages well. In that case, Dobli or Suede is absolutely not for you because it is a bag that is extremely delicate and fragile, so you want to be really, really careful with it. There are some seasons when Suede is more present in Hermes' collection than others. There have been a couple of bags that recently launched in suede. So the Constance was available in suede for a little while, especially in, I believe it was available in the color lilac and then deep blue, which is like a marine navy blue color. And then at one point, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, it was also around in a Lindy. But in the Lindy, it was a mix of Swift and suede which is definitely not the look that I would want if I picked up a bag in suede. When it comes to suede bags, I want them to be just pure suede. I don't want them to be mixed with any other leather. I want that sort of supple, soft matte look to just shine on its own. I don't think it needs anything else. So it is one that comes and goes. It's around in different bags here and there. But if I was to get the perfect suede bag, it would have to be either a Kelly Pochette or maybe a Birkin in a medium size, so maybe a Birkin 30. I think in a 35, it, it would be a little bit too large. And actually a couple of years ago when I placed a special order, I had every intention of placing a special order in suede. And I remember going into my appointment and looking at all the letters that were available. And suede was on the list. It came in, I believe, three different colors. It came in deep blue, it came in a pink, which I think might have been lilac, and then it also came in like a taupey natural color. And I immediately thought to myself that this is going to be easy. I'm going to be ordering a Birkin in suede with rose gold hardware in the taupey color. And my entire special order experience is going to take five minutes. I'll be in and out in a matter of seconds because I knew that's exactly what I had wanted. But when we cross-check the list, when you're placing a special order, there are several lists that you look at. So you look at the leather selection, you, you look at the bags that are available. And then there's also a list where they have to basically cross-reference to make sure that the leather that you choose is available in the bag that you want it in. And when I placed my special order, even though suede was an option, it was only an option in a Constance. And I didn't want to get, first of all, a Constance as my first special order bag. And if I ordered a constant special, I wouldn't get it in suede because suede, as I mentioned, is a bag that's really, really delicate. And when you're wearing a constant, you usually like to put it cross body or maybe over one shoulder, which means that it will be exposed to constant rubbing and friction on the back, which is one thing that you absolutely want to avoid when it comes to 
suede because it can start developing patches, it can start losing the surface of the leather and there is really not much that Hermes can do to repair it. And one more thing that I have to point out when it comes to suede is the fact that if the bag comes with handles or if it's a bag that you have to hold on to, so for example a Calicot, it is not one that um, that is made for everyday use because the natural oils and sweats in your hand will leave a terrible mark behind and will slowly start changing the color of the skin. So it's definitely not a leather for everyone, but it's one that I personally really appreciate the look of. And if I could, I would absolutely love to add a piece in suede to my collection, hopefully in black, if it uh, becomes available again. And the last two leathers that I just, I had to pick as my top two leathers from the brand, I couldn't really allocate a first and a second place for because I love them equally. I find them equally stunning. It just really depends on the shape and the structure of the piece that you're going to pick up, which leather I would suggest that you opt for. And the first one is Togo, which is one of the tried and true leathers of Hermes. It's one that truly never disappoints. It's a really heavily grained and pebbled leather that is just buttery soft. It's supple, but it is quite sturdy. It has some really good weight to it. And it is quite scratch resistant, but buttery soft at the same time, which makes this leather the perfect choice for any bag that you want to use, abuse, enjoy, and just make it your everyday bag because you know that this leather is going to age well and it is one that's going to hold up in your collection for a lifetime and you can easily pass it down to generation to generation and it will remain in incredible condition. I absolutely admire Togo leather. It's not one that I would ever suggest that you buy in a piece that needs more structure to it. So it's a leather that is available in Kelly Celliers, which are the more structured shapes of Kelly bags. That just looks a little bit weird and strange to me, perhaps because I associate this bag so much with more soft and supple leathers and bags. But this would be the absolute perfect choice for you if you're looking for a bag that could just become this big, soft cloud made of leather. It's just absolutely perfection. It is really heavily grained, which I know some people don't like, because this is a leather that really relies on and shows off all the natural features of skin. I mean, this is natural skin after all. So you will see the grains, you will see the imperfections, you will see the veining on the leather, which some people like, some people don't. And you can find pieces of leather that showcase these natural features more than others. So it's very important that when you get offered a bag, you really have a close look at it. You don't just, you know, play it by ear. You have a close look and you inspect the bag when you get it shown because they are made of natural leathers and each and every single one of them will be slightly different. Some Togo leathers are more veiny than others. Some have more little imperfections, which is just the name of the game when it comes to RMS. So it's important that you have a close look. I personally appreciate all these natural features because I think that they just make the bag more unique. So I'm a really, really big fan of Togo. Another plus that I should also mention is the fact that obviously it is scratch resistant and it has the tendency to drink up and soak up colors beautifully. So if you're looking for a color that you want to have a really true projection, if you want it to look really saturated and true to the original color that Hermes had envisioned, then Togo is the perfect leather to go for because colors tend to look absolutely beautiful in this leather. However, one downside to Togo is that it's extremely heavy, which is exactly why people love it because it's heavy, it's sturdy, it's scratch resistant, it ages well, but it also means that bags in Togo are going to be quite heavy. So you just have to, you just have to weigh things and decide what's more important for you. And then the last leather that I, I have to talk about is the leather that is just a no-brainer. If I get offered a bag that needs a little bit more structure to it, this is the one that I'll go for, which is Epsom. Epsom is actually a leather that was named after a town in England, and it is one of the best leathers in Hermes' portfolio, in my opinion. It doesn't really even look like leather, if you really ask me, to be honest. It almost has this sort of plasticky sheen to it, which I personally really like. 
It's an extremely durable textured leather with tiny little grains printed on the surface, which is what really gives this bag almost this shield-like ability. It is pretty scratch resistant. I don't want to say that it's completely scratch resistant because you can absolutely scratch this leather as well as you can everything else. I mean, these bags were not made for you to drag them through the mud, but if you're careful with these bags, Epsom is going to be really, really good to you and you can rely on it to stay in really good shape for a long period of time, especially if you're buying it in a bag that needs more structure. So Kelly Cellier, Epsom is the leather for you to choose. You couldn't possibly ask for a better leather because it has just the right amount of holds to it to keep the bag in good shape for a long time. It has a really subtle sheen to it, which actually does get toned down over time. I find that it does, does sort of um, mattify as you use the bag, especially in places where you usually hold on to it or you handle the bag. One downside of Epsom that I would like to point out, however, is that it's not a leather that really responds well to dyeing and colors. You'll find that most colors in Epsom look a little bit sort of washed out and faded, especially if you compare it side by side to the same color in a different leather, for example, in Togo you'll always find that Togo is more saturated, which is obviously the price that you have to pay for that shield-like finish that you get with Epsom. So I think the best way to counterbalance that is to actually ask for colors that are a little bit more vivid and a little bit more sort of poppy, pieces that you wouldn't necessarily buy in Togo or in a different leather. I think you'll find in Epsom you can actually pull them off because the color automatically looks a little bit more muted. So it's something that I, I would recommend that you keep in mind when you're asking for Epsom, but Epsom, Togo, either one of those leathers would be a great choice. In my opinion, when it comes to Togo, Hermes should stick to making bags that are more slouchy and supple in Togo and bags that are more uh, sort of structured and boxy when it comes to Epsom. I don't like when they mix them. You can, for example, buy regular Birkins in Epsom which I'm not the biggest fan of, to be honest. And you want to be careful if you're going to pick up an Epsom Birkin, you want to make sure that you keep an insert inside because when Epsom starts falling in and start losing its shape, it will start cracking. So you want to be careful with that. But at the end of the day, Epsom is an incredible leather to go for. And I could pretty much sit here all day telling you guys how much I love both of these leathers, but we don't have time because I would like to do a little Hermes giveaway for you guys. I've been meaning to do this pretty much since the last time I did a giveaway with 7RP. And speaking of 7RP, I wanted to bring this to your attention. Did you notice that 7RP has just launched an insert for the Picatin? I know for a fact many of you guys have been reaching out to me asking me if I know that they'll be coming out with an insert for a Picatin, if they'll be coming out with one. Well, they have an insert available for the Picatin now. So I'll make sure to link it down below and my discount code should still work. So if you want to get some money off of your order, you can use my discount code with them, which will be linked in the info box. I believe it's IMGPS 30 to get 30 euros off of one insert and IMGPS 70 to get 70 euros off of two, but I'll make sure to have all the information linked down below. It's just something I wanted to point out because I saw that they launched the insert and so many of you guys have been asking me about it. But let's get into the giveaway, which is one that I have been meaning to do since um, late last year, but it took me quite a while to decide what pieces I want to gift to you guys. And I wanted to make sure that I give you guys something that you can use on a regular basis. It's something that you can just really smoothly sort of build into your everyday routine. It's something that you already do and this is just sort of a more luxurious take on it. So there are two pieces that I came up with. So let me grab them. So I got two pieces from my own collection that I use because yours is already wrapped up. It was wrapped up in the store and I don't want to be touching it and opening it. I want you to get that experience of opening up a brand new Hermes box. So those will remain untouched. So I just grabbed some from my collection. So the first piece that I knew I had to do as part of the giveaway is a piece that I have been talking about pretty much ever since I've been talking about Hermes on this channel. I know for a fact that this was part of my very first Hermes haul. 
And it is one that I use every single day. It's, I have this next to every single sink in my apartment, next to the kitchen sink and the bathroom sinks. And it is the Avalon hand towel from Hermes, which I think they technically call a face towel, but I, it makes the perfect hand towel. So one of you guys will have the chance to win one of these. And I'm pretty sure I got you guys a blue one. Well, the story behind this is that um, they had one of the blue ones on display when I went to pick it up. And I didn't want to get you guys a piece that had been on display. So I asked the person I work with at RMS if they have another piece. And they were kind enough to go and, and explore what they had at the stock room. So they ended up finding another one, but it was all wrapped up in the plastic that it came in. So I just said, yeah, don't worry about opening it. I'll take it. And they immediately took it to start wrapping it up. So I don't remember exactly, but I'm 95% sure it's going to be a blue one. If it's pink, which is the other colorway, that will be an even bigger surprise. But I'm pretty sure you guys are also getting a blue one. I own both the blue and the pink and I love them equally. So I think you'd be happy with either one, but I'm pretty sure it's the blue one that I'm giving away. And then I was thinking what else I could do with the towel. Maybe I was thinking I should do a hand soap, an Hermes hand soap or an Aesop hand soap, which is my favorite, or maybe an Hermes lip balm, which I've not been getting on with. So I didn't want to get you guys something that I'm personally not the biggest fan of. And then as I was washing my hand one day, I realized that there's another part of my hand washing routine, which is essential at this point which is using one of these little jewelry trays, which again has a different purpose to it when it comes to Hermes. This is part of the mosaic tableware collection and it is used, I think it's intended to be used for condiments and spices. So I have a couple of these in the kitchen that we use, but I have one of these at every single sink where um, we wash our hands because I love having this next to the sink so if I have rings on or if I have a leather jewelry piece that I don't want to get wet I can put everything in here and I know that it will just stay in one place it will be safe in there and it's not going to be floating around the apartment so um, this is definitely one that I used as much as I use the towels and I think it just adds such a beautiful luxurious touch to any sink to any kitchen or bathroom you can obviously use this for what it what it was intended to be use, used for. So condiments and spices, you can put this next to your bed and use this to take off your rings or earrings or necklaces that you take off at night. So it has a million and one different ways of using it. And you can obviously do whatever you want to do. And one of you guys will be receiving one of these as well. So the giveaway is going to be a little package that consists of a towel, I believe in blue, and then this little mosaic plate and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I try to make the entry requirements as simple as possible. So if you would like to be considered in the giveaway, then please make sure that you consider subscribing. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and comment down below what you're most excited for in 2021. It can be anything. It can be a personal goal, a personal trip that you're hoping to go on. It can be a new piece that is launching in 2021 that you're hoping to add to your collection. It could be a wish list piece. So anything that gets you excited about 2021, I would love to hear about. So make sure to let me know in the comment section. And that's pretty much it. I will just choose a winner from the comment section in, in about a week and a half, two weeks. I'll leave the exact uh, date in the description box for you guys. You can check out all the entry requirements and also the date that I will choose the winner. It's just as simple as that. And one thing that is not part of the sort of the entry requirements, but one that I would be extremely grateful for is if you could share this video with someone who loves Hermes as much as we do, someone who you think would love to participate in the giveaway or someone who you think would enjoy joining our little community here on YouTube. I would be extremely grateful if you could share this video with one person, a couple of people, with a group of people, whoever you know loves Hermes. I would be really, really thankful for that. It's not part of the giveaway, but it's something that um, I would really appreciate. And this is pretty much it. This completes today's video on my Hermes leather guide and the giveaway announcement. So if you decide to participate in the giveaway, the best of luck to you. And I hope to see you back here with a new video on Thursday. Bye.